I already said good morning to you, but I'll tell you again. <laughs> good to have you all here this morning in the house of the Lord. Praise God. Uh, I did have a scripture I wanted to read to you real quick. This is out of Psalm 33, verses 20 through 22. My soul waits for the Lord. He is my help and my shield. Amen? Sometimes you have to wait for God to come through. That's the hard part of life. We want it yesterday. Verse 21, For our, my heart will rejoice in God because we have trusted in His holy name. Knowing the names of God is a huge thing. If you ever do want to do a study in the Bible about the names of God, we're, when we get into Abram and we talk about him a little bit, we'll talk about God's revelation of who he is. It's important for you to know who God is. Amen? Amen. Y'all there? Yeah. Y'all have your coffee today? Yeah. All right. Verse 22, let your mercy, O Lord, be upon me according as I hope in you. I want his mercy. Amen. Don't you? Amen. Grab the hand of the person next to you. We're going to pray and we're going to worship this morning. Hallelujah. Appreciate you being here. Father, we thank you today, Father God, for being in such a great country that we're able to worship you freely still, even at this time and in this hour. We do pray, Father God, for our government. We ask you to touch all those that are in places of power and decision making that, Lord God, they'll get to their knees so that they can make good decisions for our great nation. We thank you for the, those that volunteer and those that work in the military. God, we pray for your blessing on all of our armed forces, and we thank you for all the things that they give for the protection of our great nation. And Father, this morning we just desire so much just to walk with you. I pray you bless our time of worship and praise and fellowship, Lord. We love you. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Blessings. Amen.
how great, how awesome is He, and together we sing. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Hallelujah. We bow down and worship Him now. How great and awesome is He. And together we'll sing. All around, it's the anthem of the Lord's renown. And together we sing. Oh, come on, church, sing it out. Everyone. Everyone sing. Everyone sing. Hallelujah. Holy is the Lord. God, God Almighty. Filled with His glory, holy is the Lord, God, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with yes. His glory. Praise you, Father God. Earth is filled with Your glory.
Hallelujah. Wow. The presence of God is here this morning. Receive from Him. Now as we sing this song this morning, let's open up here if you want to come and pray. If you feel like you need to ask God to renew your spirit, renew your mind, renew your faith, the time to do it is, is during this song this morning, okay? So be ready. Amen. We must remain in Him. We must remain in Him. We can bear no fruit. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you hurting and broken within? Yes. You're hurting and broken by the weight of your sin. Hallelujah. Jesus is calling. Yes, Jesus is calling. Hallelujah. Have you come, come to the end of Father, yourself? Is your heart's Do desire? You thirst for a drink That's from your daughter with great strength. Jesus is Jesus, the strongest one I know. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I oh, thank you for the rebuke in any illness or sickness in this body. Altar, in Jesus' the name, Father's let that healing flow, let her receive it, let her confess it, and let her believe it, Father God. In Jesus' name, I'm right there. The Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the woman of God. Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, that she's going to continue going forward with you through everything that sets itself against her in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. There are hurdles and obstacles in the way. But the Lord will bring you through them as you continue to look to Him. So rejoice, daughter, for I am pleased and gracious with you. And I'm bringing you even to a greater place in me, says the Lord. So relax and rest and trust in your God. Everything you've been asking is going to bring it to pass. It might not be in your time or even in your way, but God is working mightily in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for strengthening this daughter, this handmaid of the Lord. Give her wisdom. And thank you for healing her, Father God, from the top of her head to the of her feet. Heal her of every illness and malady, Father. Thank you for it. Was born with Amen. Amen. The Bless your daughter, Lord. Let her be good to her sister. Let her obey her mom and father. Oh, come to the altar. The Father, I thank you for our brothers. I thank you, Lord, that you are in the family. You're there with it. Thank you, God, that you're not depending on anyone else. The help us to come hold on to the Lord of Jesus Christ. I pray work heart surgical work now within him, Lord, releasing the pain and causing him to turn to you with a whole heart, not fret, not turn away, not do those things that are destructive, but instead, Lord, that he will turn to you with his whole heart now, in Jesus' name. Satan, I come against every lie that you try to speak to him. In the name of Jesus, I bind it up. And I thank you right now, God, for the blessing of strength and determination of this man of God. He's not going to give up and go back and look at regret, but he's going to go forward to you, Father God, with everything he has in him. Strength that he to do it, Lord. He'll run the race, God, to win. Hallelujah. Even if he has to run it alone. I thank you, Father God. The truth, we all have to run it alone. And I thank you, Father, for the strength of God poured into his heart right now. In Jesus name. Father, thank you for healing my brother. I rebuke this infection in his sinuses. Father God, I come against it in the name of Jesus. Isn't he Father God, you said by the stripes on Jesus' back, we were healed. We receive that healing now. We receive it, Father, in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father God, right now for the peace of God passing all understanding. Thank you for leading him and guiding him every step of the way, Lord. Walk with me humbly, says the Lord. Humbly. The oh, Lord would say to you, son, I'm going to show you things you know not about. The new revelation coming to you. You're already ready to receive it. And all that heart says is this. Well, what is it? Lord, I'm here. 
Touch her. He wants everybody God, to come we thank to the you altar. that when we're broken, you're nearest it's to broken hearts. It's already been good. It's finished. I pray, God, that she'll turn. He wants no man to perish. cry out to you. You are his children heart. and he loves she you. does, Lord, I know you'll hear. And you'll answer. You'll when you remain in him, God bless you will bear fruit. Let Anything you want, flow into her you heart. ask in Jesus' Father, name. In the name of Jesus, protect her, overwhelm her with your presence now in Jesus' name. Let that healing power of God flow into all of her family and into her life. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Bear your cross as you wait for Hallelujah. the crown. Tell the world. Oh, we're going to tell the world. We're going to tell the world with our hands and our feet. Hallelujah. Thank we're going to use our hands and feet. Bless you, Lord. Amen. Bear your cross as you wait for the crown. Tell the world of the treasure you found. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you this morning, Father. Aren't you glad Jesus is here today? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give Jesus a hand. Thank you, Father. We love you. We bless you. Hallelujah. There's no reason for you not to receive from Him this morning. Amen? Open your heart and receive from Jesus today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bow your heads with me if you would. Father, I thank You for this people today. There are people that You've drawn out of darkness and put into the light of people, God, that You love dearly. I pray that somehow, God, You'll miraculously let that love of God resonate in their hearts this morning in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. You can be seated if you're not already. Amen. You can hit the lights. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. Awesome, awesome this morning. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have Scott come this morning. He's going to probably have to recruit some help. Amen. We'll do this morning's offering. Praise God. Good to see you all here in divine presence today. God brought you here. Did you know that? Yeah. Amen. Not to hurt you, but to heal you. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, if you've got your offering this morning, let's lift these up before the Lord. <coughs> Ask the Lord's blessing on the offering. I've got something exciting to share with you while we... Uh, pick up the offering this morning too. Real praise report about some stuff. So anyway, let's lift this up before the Lord. Father, we thank you for the blessings that you've blessed us with, Lord. You've poured into our lives. We are so thankful, so thankful, God, that you're not even begun to do what you want to do. You're just working in our lives in an immeasurable way. We thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. Now bless this. Multiply it, Father, for the furtherance of your kingdom. Bless everyone who gives this morning. Give back to them, press down, shaken together, and running over. Give back into their lives. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 Scott, I'm going to give you this, please, sir. And keys as well. Yeah. Amen. Just a couple of quick announcements. Yeah. Happy Fourth of July. 
<laughs> Independence Day is coming up Tuesday. <clears throat> and uh, we know a lot of people are gone because of the holiday. That's fine. We just bless them in Jesus' name. We also, uh, while it's on my mind, I don't want to forget this. We may do this even while we're taking up the offering or maybe a, at least when they get done. D.E. Step's mother is in uh, OSF. She's been admitted to the hospital with severe stomach cramps. And they have said, Dee uh, texted me this morning and said that they may have to do surgery if the antibiotic doesn't work. I have no idea what's wrong with her, but we need to lift up Dee's mom. She is, uh, I think she's in her late 70s, early 80s, so we need to pray for her this morning. Uh, some of you don't know who Jeremy Caps is. It's Alicia Stoltz's father. Guess he was working in a tree, fell out of the tree, uh, busted himself up really bad. They put him in a, uh, actually they sedated him when he was in the hospital yesterday. Then they worked on him in surgery, I think this morning, and repaired some of the stuff that's been broken. He broke his wrist, broke his arm. Uh, so far, I think they, he's not really sure who he is or where he's at, so we need to pray for Jeremy this morning. Um, also... Uh, yesterday morning, Cindy Wickert woke up, and her eye was so swollen. Guy said it looked like he punched her, and he didn't. I said, you sure, guy? He didn't, like, do it, you know? No, he said, no, I didn't. But anyway, we need to pray for Cindy. She is at OSF as well. They kept her overnight, and uh, they're treating all of this stuff, her thyroid and everything, so we need to really pray for her too. Vicki. He is a believer or he's not? He is not. What's his first name? Maverick? Okay. 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 Death has a way of doing that. Amen. We'll definitely pray for Maverick too. Anybody else got a real quick prayer request? Yeah. Absolutely. Deb needs prayer today. She's struggling with in her physical body. Anybody else? Oh, we need to pray for the situation in North Korea that it doesn't escalate and get any worse. Amen. Amen. Josiah? Your dad? Your head? Uh-oh. Well, we'll pray for you, Josiah. We love you, buddy. Tinley. Who? Caden. Okay. Ow. Okay, we'll definitely pray for him. Stevie. Yes, we will. Okay. We'll definitely pray for her, for sure. Jeff? Okay. Is that Maslin back there? Could tell the headband on. Yes, dear. definitely pray for her too. Martin, your back. Amen. We'll pray for your back and your front. Yeah. Awesome. Praise God. Gloria. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Awesome. Praise God. A couple good praise reports. That's wonderful. Amen. Hallelujah. Before we pray, speaking of praise reports, I'm going to have Shane put that picture up there. Uh, not that one. It is water baptism next Sunday. <laughs> All right. I don't know if you can see this very well or not. Chris Coffey's company that he works for has two complete fire escapes they want to give to us that are galvanized, ready to put up. Isn't that awesome? I want you to know we budgeted $1,700 to buy this and to get it made, and we were ready to do it, but they've been real slow in getting it done. Nostal, the company down in Manitou, didn't have time to do it. Chris came up to me yesterday and said, isn't it a good thing that we waited? No, I wanted it last year, but you know what I, you know what I mean? But it is a good thing to wait, isn't it? Because you learn when you wait, God will provide something like this. Yeah, He does. Isn't that wonderful? It's galvanized. It's beautiful. It's got all... It, yeah, it's, it's... Praise God. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> so, uh, hopefully, we'll get that soon, and Chris will have an opportunity on the weekend to put it up. If you want to help him, that'd be great. Stevie? We, we will do that. Amen. Pray for my... Uh, Niece Brooke, yes. Martin. Praise God. Congratulations. <laughs> Praise report. Amen. Hallelujah. I know the Buntons will be real happy about that too. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Since there's so many of these, let's stand and pray. Yes, patience. Your elbow is better? Michaela's elbow is better. Praise God. That's wonderful. Amen. <laughs> That's because we prayed for you. God healed you. Amen. Amen. All right. Grab the hand of the person next to you and we will do this quickly. Father, we thank you this morning that you are such a faithful God. So many good, wonderful praise reports as well as, Father, as prayer requests for those that are in dire need. Father, we pray for uh, Maverick. We pray for all those that are facing life and death situations, God, that they'll know You. So we pray that You'll bring Christians into His path and conviction to His heart that He might have eternal life. We don't want Him to go into eternity not knowing You. And Father, we lift up all those that are sick, from Cindy to Dee's mother to uh, all those that have been requested today. I can't remember all of them, God, but You know all of the need. So we lift them all up to You, Father. Those that are dealing with cancer, we ask You to bless them with healing. For those, God, that are struggling within, Father God, with pains and hurts, we pray that You bless them and heal them. Heal all those that are sick today, Father. We just give You the praise and the honor and the glory for it. In Jesus' name, and everybody said Amen. Amen. You can be seated if you can. We're going to go ahead and dismiss the kids. Children, you're welcome to go to Kids Zone this morning. Bless you. Bless the children. Be good, Carter, and maybe I'll give you that Snickers bar. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Love all these kids. We're blessed to have them. Amen. Praise God. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Amen. I'm going to have you stand again. It's good for you. you got to be kidding me. i got to stand up again? Amen. You guys need some Geritol or something. Amen. Bow your heads real quick and we'll pray for this morning's Word. Father, we thank You. You love us enough that You've given us these 66 books by 40 different authors, three different languages, over several thousand years, and yet they're so coherent. And Father, we just ask You this morning to teach us Your Word Father God, we sang this morning that we wanted to be filled. We want to just be filled not only with Your presence, but with the knowledge of who You are and who we are and what You're doing in our lives and how this life here is so short. Very meaningful, but very short. We thank You, Father God, this morning that You open our hearts to hear what the Spirit of the Lord would say in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated if you can. We're in the Nature of God series. This is book three. The calling of Abram. I don't even know if I'm going to get to the calling of Abram or not today. I've got it 
packed away in here, but there's a few things I want to share with you very quickly. Uh, if you were here Wednesday night, you got a little bit of a precursor of what God's been speaking to me about, and that is just getting yourselves closer to Him. Okay? Now, in Romans 7.7, 7, I don't know if I gave you this scripture or not, Shane. I don't think I did. I don't remember. Uh, Romans 7.7, 7, basically the Apostle Paul says that the law was given to make him realize he needed Jesus. You all realize you need Jesus this morning? Now, as Christians, you can try as you want to to keep the Ten Commandments. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to fail at it. All right? Now, God wants you to keep them, but He goes a different way to get you there. All right? It's called love. If you love somebody, do you want to do good to them? Do you want to help them? Do you want to bless them? You do, right? They don't make you do it. You do it because you love them, right? That is the key to walking with God for you and me is to love Him more than we love anything else. I know you've heard this before, and the word love sometimes is so used that it just goes right over our heads. We don't really grasp what it means. But I know that if I was to say this to some of you, some of you that are single that want to have a boyfriend, you girls, if you fell in love with him, wouldn't you want to do anything for him? Oh, you guys are quiet. But you would. Same with you guys. Some of you guys, yeah, that's probably true too. Some of you guys, if you find the right young lady for your life and you fall in love with her, I mean, it's everything, right? It's the same way with the Lord. But we learned a couple things last week in the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and it's what I'm going to reiterate again to you again. Now, you're going to hear this a few times over the next few weeks. I'm going to be a little repetitive. Okay, forgive me. It's not because I don't have anything else to say. It's because we haven't learned this yet. We have not learned this yet. I have not learned this yet. I'm still growing in this knowledge of learning this, and so are you. And that's this. God is more interested in getting close to you than you being good. He's more interested in getting close to you than you making mistakes. He's more interested in you getting close to Him than anything else in your life. It's more important than God getting you out of your tough situation. Sometimes you're going to be in a situation that's very difficult and God's not going to get you out of it. Are you hearing me? But you're praying, God, get me out of this. This is too hard. I don't like this. This hurts too much. And you know what the Holy Spirit is saying? Hang on. Hang on. Do you love me enough to trust me when you're hurt to keep going even though you are hurt and I don't take the hurt away from you immediately? That's a tough question. Right? And if you're going to be walking with God for very long, you're going to face this question over and over again. Amen. <laughs> you're going to face this a lot. God knows that for you to go through it, it's better for you than Him eliminating it for you and making your life easy. Are you hearing me? So He's saying this morning, if it gets you closer to me, God says, then I'm going to let you go through it to get closer to me. His action and, his, and inaction keeps rule number one. What is God's rule number one when it comes to you and me? Well, that's what He wants us to do. What's His rule for you? It's this. Listen, He gives you your own free will. You can do as a Christian whatever you want. And God still loves you and you still know that. Right? I'm talking about how God feels about you. Not how what you're supposed to do with Him. It's what He's doing with and for you. He gives you your own will. Okay? He gave your parental units their own will. And some of them hurt you when you were at home when you were little, right? And you still carry the scars of that pain and that hurt to this day. But you know what God's saying? I want to get that out of you so that we don't have anything blocking our relationship. I've got a good example today, and Gary's going to play God. 
Now, Monica might say he tries to do that all the time. But anyway, Gary's going to play God this morning. This, this is us. Here's what we do. We walk with God carrying our selfishness and our past, and we think we're just going to, oh, God's wonderful. Come here, Gary, please. So God is wonderful, right? I want you to see something. Okay, does God still love me even though I got all this stuff? Yeah. Can Gary give me a hug? Go ahead, hug me, Gary. Yeah. <laughs> but can I hug Gary? I can't until I start letting this stuff go. Are you seeing this this morning? Yep. Yep. When you begin to drop your selfishness and let your past go, then you can hug God back. Yeah, there we go. Now that is cool. Now you're receiving. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Gary. Hallelujah. We have a $25 gift certificate for you after service this morning. And uh, we put it in the offering plate already. So anyway, <laughs> just kidding. I think that's awesome. We have to understand this, that God's not failing to love you. God's not failing to help you. God's not failing to be there for you. But you're failing to see it because you're so blinded by your pain and your past. Do you hear this? Blinded by what you want and what you think you have to have. So rule number one, you have free will. Rule number two, God doesn't violate rule number one. So if you go out there right now, today, <clears throat> and you go down here to USCO and you rob it as a believer and you're a Christian, and you have self-will, you go rob USCO if you wanted to. Now if they catch you, what's going to happen? We'll come down and visit you in your orange, orange jumpsuit. We'll come and pray for you, but you will receive the full measure of the law. Amen? Right? That, who has free will? We do. All right. Now, we talked last week about the three brothers, right? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They said this to the king who had power over their lives. You, you might feel, as you walk your life, somebody else has power over you. This, these guys, they had a king that had power over them. And this is Daniel 3.17. They say this to the king. Hey, king, the God that we serve is able to free us from this furnace of fire. God's able to get us out of it. Is God able to get you out of any furnace of affliction that you are in? Yeah. Right. He, God could keep all the trouble of life away from you forever if He violated rule number one. But He won't do that. <clears throat> not only will He not violate your will, He will not, not violate those around you their will either. Right? So you're going to have people around you that are going to hurt you and say things about you and do things to you that you cannot control, just like they couldn't control the king. But what you can say to yourself is the same thing that they are saying to the king. I don't care who hurts me. I'm not going to pick up an offense. I'm going to go walk with God. I'm going to walk in the truth. And if they want to hurt me, then God, I'm going to bring it to you and help. And you're going to help me get through it. Now, that may feel lousy. It may hurt terribly. And you may want to give up because it hurts so bad. Death will do that. Some people, when they experience a death in their family, hate God. As if it was His fault they died. Is it God's fault when people die? Well, I guess it was His time. Not necessarily. Some of us, if you eat fast food, you know what that really means, right? You're speeding your way to your death. Don't eat fast food. Did that, did you, did that register with you? you don't eat fast food because fast food will speed you to the grave. That's why they call it fast food. God's telling you this this morning. He doesn't cause death. What causes death? Sin does. God's plan is for everybody to... John 10.10, 10, right? Right? The enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Jesus said, I've come to give you superabundant, overflowing, nonstop, bubbling up, always there, happy, happy day life, constantly. It's yours. Do you take it? Sometimes I don't think we take it. As, I don't, I don't sometimes. God could have kept all the trouble away from your life, but he would have broke rule one and two, and he's not going to do that. But Philippians 1.6 is at work. 
You know what Philippians 1 6 says, right? Being confident of this very thing. He that's begun the good work in you is going to do what? He's going to complete that work. So while you're walking around carrying your baggage, God's at work to get you to let it go. One of the greatest things you will ever do in your Christian walk, in your life, is when trouble comes and you get hurt, is to learn to let it go. That is one of the hardest. You don't know what they did to me, man. You don't know how she cheated me. I'm going to court, man. I'm going to get them. You need to learn to let it go. It is very difficult to do. You know why? Because we want to hold on to our hurts and pains. We do? Yeah. And Jesus says, Come unto Me, all you that labor and are heavily laden with all these griefs and hurts and pains and disappointments. He says, I'll give you rest. He can't give you rest if you still carry Him around yourself. It's hard, but you've got to learn to let Him go. Along with a generous helping of Romans 8.28. You all know what 8.28 says. We know all those for all those that love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to His purpose. <clears throat> now there's two qualifications for you to understand that everything's working together for your good. What are they? Number one, you have to learn to love God even in bad situations. You hearing me? If you don't love God, you're not going to see the good that He's doing. And you have to realize that God's called you according to whose purpose? His purpose, not yours. So once you step back and you begin to love the Lord, no matter what happens, you know that His purpose is paramount in your life, then you'll begin to see. You'll begin to see that these things are working together for your good. Wow, isn't that amazing? And then Ephesians 2.10. I love this, Ephesians 2.10. We are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus. That word workmanship from the Greek means is a Greek word that we use poem. We make the word poem out of it. It's poema. It means God takes your life and makes harmony out of it. He makes sense out of it. He makes it a, a harmonious, loving life of poem, of words that rhyme, right? To good works which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. We've got to walk and live with a freedom of thought and conscience. Your conscience needs to be free. You can't walk free unless you are. You understand what your conscience is, right? Feeling like you're always guilty. God wants you to be free of that. All right, the three brothers go on and say to the one that had power over them, this is verse 18 of Daniel chapter 3, but even if he doesn't get us free, O king, we want you to know that we're not going to bow down to you or anything you make. We have what one God, Jehovah. Hallelujah. There's another man that faced this same question in the New Testament. He was uh, 33 and a half years old. And he was being threatened with his very life. He goes to the Garden of Gethsemane. This is in Luke chapter 22, verse 42. The night he was to be tried and found guilty of being innocent. Jesus was found guilty of being innocent. He says in Luke 22, 42, Father, if it's your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Another way to look at it is like this. Jesus said this to the Lord. Father God, you know best. Can you please deliver me out of this? But even if you don't, Satan, I'm putting you on notice. Whether the Father delivers me or not, I'm taking His will and not mine. Are you there yet in your life? What are you bowing down to? I'm going to hit two or three things and that'll be it this morning. We'll be out here early, Lord willing. One of the things we bow down to is a thing called regret. Do you all know what regret is? I'm going to give you a definition of it. A feeling of sadness about something sad or wrong or about a mistake that you have made and a wish that it could have been different and better. Or looking backward, trying to walk forward. You're not going to get very far looking backward, trying to go forward. Are you regretting your past? Are you hearing this? God doesn't want you to walk in regret, brothers and sisters in Christ. He wants you to realize your past is gone and you have to let it go. There are many things I wished I'd have done different. But you know what? I'm not going to waste time 
and energy thinking about what should have, could have, would have, might be, why it might have been if I'd have. That's a waste. It's now and forward. Amen. I want to learn from there, right? But I'm not going to sit around and regret the past. I want to go forward with God. And I can't do that if I hang on to regret. Here's another one, rejection. We've talked a lot about that recently because there's some of you in here that God wants you to get this word deep in your heart. Some of you haven't even been honest with yourself yet. You know, sometimes you've got to sit down with yourself and say, Self, yeah, I need to be honest with you. I know you do. What are you really thinking? I'm not sure. Well, you need to get it under control. I know. Hey, Father, can you help me know what I'm thinking? I'm really having a hard time with this. You ever feel that way? We don't even know ourselves very well, right? Jeremiah said, the heart's desperately wicked. Who can know it? He said, well, I'm a new creation. But the heart refers to your mind, will, and emotions. Has that been recreated yet? No. We're all in process, right? Rejection is this. You feel depressed and lonely, like a worthless reject who will never amount to anything or find someone worthy to love or love you in return for who you are because you're just not good enough. Many of you in here have been abandoned and felt rejected by your parental units. Amen? When that happens, great anger and bitterness of mind will enter into your heart, and bitterness, the Scripture says, is very difficult to get rid of. You get so embittered that you can't love somebody, you can't really reach out to anyone because you've got this bitterness of heart that's within you. God has to deal with it. He's got to help you get rid of that bitterness. Hallelujah. Worry and anxiety. We hold on to our worry and anxiety when Jesus said, what good is it to worry? Will it add an inch to your life? No. And in fact, we, through scientific research, Dr. Carolyn Leaf's books, if you haven't read them yet, Who Switched Off My Brain and Switch On Your Brain, two volumes. We went through them here and studied them. If you worry, it actually sends negativity through your entire body and makes you physically sick. Did you know that? If you start thinking about regret, you start feeling like you're nothing but rejected, then you start really mully-grubbing over the worries and anxieties of life, you will make yourself sick physically. There's chemicals that are produced in your brain. In fact, when I was looking up the, the meanings, the, psych, the psychology today had meanings for these for rejection and, and uh, regret. And they're, they're so involved, I couldn't even, I was going to try to explain, but there, there's actual chemical processes that go on in your brain when you start feeling these things and you don't take them to God and get rid of them and let them go. So your reluctance to let it go is making you sick. And Jesus says today, He don't want you to be sick. Amen? He wants you to be free and be healed. Hallelujah. Amen. That is something to give God praise for, for sure. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Now, this last one I'm going to hit is one that we did a whole six months worth of book learning on. Y'all remember Melody Beatty's book? Anybody remember the title? Codependent No More. Remember that book? When we went through that book, I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm not going to tell you who it was. But when we went through that book, every week that we did it, somebody would cry. Somebody would feel pain because codependency is something that we all have and it's something that we've inherited from the sinful nature. And many of you have been through experiences where you've been hurt so much by somebody that you love. Codependency tells us we need another person to fulfill us. Are you hearing this? Codependency says you need somebody else to make your life complete. It says I need you to make me feel valued and whole. I need somebody else to make me feel valued and whole. Now I dare say that's almost all of you in here in one way or another. This belief system is crooked, broken, and toxic. It will destroy you. It will make you where you, no one's going to want to be around you because you're always trying to get something from somebody for yourself because you're counting on them to make you feel good. You're counting on them to make you feel valued. <clears throat> if you do that in a relationship, it will crumble and fall. 
Hallelujah. The enemy encourages these things. He lies to you and tells you, yeah, you better, you better check it out. If they're not treating you the way you want them to, then they must not like you and they're rejecting you, right? That can ha- you can interpret that with the people around you all the time in any way you want to. The enemy will tell you that God's not enough. You're too lost and your pain's too great. Maybe you've heard him say that to you. The enemy is a liar. Jesus said he's not only the, a liar, he's the father of lies and there is no truth in him. And he will try to lie to you and tell you you need this or that to be happy when God says you need me. You're going to have to go through fires at times, amen? You're going to go through tests. Who was that fourth man the ungodly king saw in the fire with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? It was the Son of God. This is rule number three about God. Rule number one, what was rule number one? Free will. Rule number two, he won't violate your free will. Rule number three, When you go through these fiery tests, He will always be there with you. Joshua 1.5 No man is going to be able to stand against you all the days of your life as I was with Moses. God was with Moses through all 120 years of his life. Did you know Moses' life is broken down into three forties? Three forties. Forty years he was raised to walk like an Egyptian. Walk like an Egyptian. All right? I think that's a Rick Springfield song. So for 40 years, 40 years of his life, he was raised to be a prince, raised in wealth, raised with everything he ever wanted was right there at his beck and call. He read and knew hieroglyphics of the Egyptian people. He knew Hebrew and Aramaic. He was intelligent. He'd been taught in the best schools. He, you know, he walked like an Egyptian. He walked smartly. He was a very... Rich guy. But then something happens to him, and he makes a big boo-boo when he kills an Egyptian man beating up one of his fellow Jewish guys, right? So he thinks, man, I better I better exit stage left or they're gonna take you know they're gonna take care of me. So he takes off, loses everything, and for forty years, where does he live? Desertville, man. He's on the backside of the desertville. He's on the worst place on earth. 40 years in the desert of life. Sometimes God will take you through deserts of life too. I don't know if you're hearing that or not. Then the next 40 years, after God appears to him in a burning bush that doesn't get consumed, I want to be like that too. I want to be a burning bush for God that doesn't get consumed except by Him. To leading God's people out of bondage on their 40-year travel, God was with him. He said, like Mo, I'll be with you. In the New Testament, he says, I'm not only going to be with you, I'm going to be where? Living in you. And he goes on to say, I will not leave you or forsake you or ever abandon you. That's rule number three. Rule number one, your own will. Rule number two, he won't violate rule number one. Rule number three, I will never leave you, forsake you, or abandon you in life. But there's one last thing I want to hit, and I'll close. There's one thing, and maybe this is the greatest work of all that was done in this Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego story. And this speaks highly to all of us. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Daniel 3, 25 through 26, Praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel, Jesus, to rescue his servants who trusted him. They defied the king's command and were willing to die rather than to bend their knees to the king's command and worship any other god except their own. Therefore, I make this decree, if any people, whatever their race, nation, or language, speak a word against this, this god, we're going we're gonna to whack them. There is no other god who can rescue like this. There is no other god who can rescue like this. There is no one who can rescue you from the pain of your past and your hurts, and your regrets, then like this God. He is awesome. He can rescue you. You just have to want to be rescued. Nebuchadnezzar was a little radical. 
hey, you've served the Lord, man, or, you know, what we're saying, hey, take this guy out and whack him. I think he must have been in the mafia. I don't know. The king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to even higher positions in the province of Babylon. Listen, following Jesus, doing the right thing may not feel immediately wonderful at the moment that you do it. But be patient. Walk with him. Live for him. Eventually, like for King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar, was he Jewish? Everybody say no. Did he have any idea who God was? Everybody say no. He didn't know what he was doing. But because they stood for God, listen, because they walked with God through these terrible trials, Nebuchadnezzar saw it, and it made him want to be a worshiper of the same God that they have. Here's the deal. When you're walking through a test and a trial, and you feel like everything is, the, the holes are in the bottom of the boat and you're sinking. And, but you know God's with you, and you're confessing it even though you don't feel it. Remember, walking with God, living for God means you confess the truth even when you don't feel it. You confess the truth when you feel the opposite. You feel like crap, but you don't confess it. Father, I feel today in Jesus' name I'm going to make it through this. This, is, this stinks, man, but I'm going to make it through this. I know this. I know I'm going to make it, Lord. And people around you see that. And they're going to want to know, dude, how, how are you doing this, man? It's God, I can't, you know. I make mistakes, but He still says He's going to help me out. What kind of God is this? Oh, then you hook them. If they're big enough to hook them, they're big enough to cook them. Hallelujah. So you hook them, man. Just like you do that fish with that worm. Uh, you know, I... I hate the fact that you constantly put pictures at them on the internet of all these great fish you catch. But, because I am, I'm not catching them, you know what I mean? I don't know what you, did you use worms? Say what? Rubber worms. So he's using fake worms. But you're going to be the lure that God's going to use to bring other people to Jesus. How? Just by continually believing that he is going to keep rule number three. He's going to be with you through thick or thin. Hallelujah. Jesus did the right thing. What happened to Him when He did the right thing? They crucified Him. They killed Him. But God brought Jesus through it too. Romans 14.8 Whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. Listen to me for just a minute. In America, we think life here is so great. I, I remember talking to a guy when... Kelly Madden died. He said, I just love this life. I hope this I just live forever here. I just have this life that's so wonderful and I love it. And I thought, man, dude, you're setting yourself up for a huge fall. Because you know what the, the Word says? And they actually, they've done scientific surveys. And it's 100%. Scientific surveys. Everyone dies. You can't avoid it. We're all going to meet the Maker at some point. Right? You're all, we're all going to die. This life is temporary. You need to be able to let it go. If you don't get everything you want, hallelujah, I've still God's. If you don't get it the way you want, when you want, okay, Lord, there must be something you're doing here. Take me through this. Help me see this, Lord. Grow me up in this, Father. Amen. Are you hearing this this morning? Praise God. That's some good preaching. I like that. <laughs> no, I don't want you to <laughs> I'm preaching to myself this morning, my brothers and sisters. Jesus died tortured and alone, but God was with him. In fact, not only was God with him, God was him. <laughs> Amen. When we go through tests, tough times, even when we stumble, God's not only just with us, God's in us. You can make it through what you're going through. Amen. Say this with me. I'm going to make it because of Jesus. Who lives in me. I trust Him. I'm going through. Come hell or high water. I'm going to make it. In Jesus' name. And I want you to know this this morning. Hell will come against you. But the Scripture says, the gates of hell cannot prevail against the child of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Like the three Hebrew guys were to Nebuchadnezzar, we are a channel of God's blessing to a lost and dying world. You're it. 
When you go to Walmart and you're nice to the clerk, and when you go and you go out to eat and you give them 20% tip or whatever, or when you're nice to your grandkids or you're nice to somebody else's kids, whatever you do and you're walking with God and you're just being that light and that salt, amen? You're, bringing, you're going to bring people to Jesus. And when you get right with God and you start walking with Him, things may get worse for a while. Are you ready for that? Can you stomach that? But I thought every time that people walk with God, it was all sunshine and rainbows and lollipops and gummy worms. Uh, <clears throat> then you ain't got your nose in the book yet. Paul and Silas were God's men, man. They were preaching the word in Jerusalem. And their reward was to get beat and thrown into jail. Hallelujah. Wow, that's a great testimony, ain't it? Things may actually get worse, but God wants you to know this morning that He's going to be with you to strengthen you through these things to make you a witness to somebody else. And even if you fail, you can tell them, hey, I know you're looking at me as this super Christian dude, but you know what? I'm not. God's got a lot of work to do in me. I, I'm just not all there yet. But I'll tell you one thing. I'm there. Are you there there yet? Do you want to be there yet? And you can share Jesus with them. Amen? Hallelujah. I hope you got something out of this this morning. Now, <laughs> amen. Now, next week, we are going to talk about God and Abram and how God reveals who he is to Abram, like he's kind of revealed to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who he is here. If you can, if you can get, by the way, if you can make seven services in a row, seven Sundays in a row, you'll be changed forever. If you can make seven Sundays and seven Wednesdays in a row, look out. You'll be world changers and heartbreakers, man. Hallelujah. Praise God. Next week, we're going to be in Genesis chapter 12, after the flood, after the language change. God's about to restart a new thing. And He starts it with a guy named Abram. Genesis chapter 12. He's going to do two things in this relationship. Number one, when we start this next week, God wants you to see that He kindles a relationship with a guy named Abram. Because God wants to be close to him. He wants to be close to you. It's more important than you doing everything right is for you to get closer to him. Now remember, for me to get closer to Gary, who represented God, what did I have to do? Start to drop my stuff. Then I can hug him back, right? Okay? Right? It's not, now, I didn't say dropping my bad behavior. It's dropping my bad attitudes. It's taking my bad thinking and setting it aside and letting it go. And then I can embrace God and I can see what God's doing as He embraces me. Amen? Rekindle the God-man relationship. Been on hold for a while, right? Due to the flood and whatnot. And number two, God was activating something that is the story of the entire Bible. It's more important than Abram. There was a young man that was going to be born in Bethlehem. All the rest of the Bible is all about Jesus. All of it. All of it. Amen. Stand. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you for being so attentive this morning on this holiday weekend. I know you guys have been... Bow your heads with me if you would for just a second. Father, while every head's bowed and every eye's closed, maybe this morning you need to ask Jesus into your heart. Maybe you've never done that before. Maybe you've never asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins and to take residence up in your life. If you've never done that before, today He's knocking on the door of your heart and He wants to come in to you and make a new life for you. If that's you this morning, you need to ask Jesus to save you, to move in you. Raise your hand if that's you this morning. Anybody in the house this morning says, Pastor Mark, I need to ask Jesus to save me. Amen. Hallelujah. Maybe this morning, you that are here, you kind of wandered away from God. He wants to rekindle this relationship with you. If you need your relationship with God restarted and reignited, put your hand up if that's you this morning. Amen. I see these hands. Hallelujah. Father, while your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, Father, in Jesus' name, those that have raised their hands, I pray, God, for just a renewed spirit within them. Let them know, Father God, that they are greatly loved greatly valued by you that you, that you 
If they're the most important thing to you, Father God, above all else, let them know that, Father. Bless them and rekindle that relationship. And even as I pray this, I hear the enemy telling some of you, you're not good enough. And God saying, my son was good enough. You're in my son, therefore you're good enough too to receive this relationship that I want you to have. So, Father, I thank you for doing it. Bless you for it in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray you give everyone just a solid week. Let them be blessed abundantly. Lord, let them just fellowship with you every day. Lord, don't let them, let them not worry about having a prayer time. Let every moment be a prayer time. Let them just be so aware of your, your presence this week, Father. We bless them in Jesus' name. We thank you for good reports coming out of what we prayed for today, those that are sick, that are going to be raised up for your glory. So bless them. Let your countenance be upon them. Let your presence be within them. Let them have a consciousness all week of your presence, Lord. Thank you for that in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Blessings. We love you. You're welcome to go home. Hallelujah.